Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't, and neither are my opinions. This is Tesseract, Tesra's HVZ primary stripe. Let's get into the video. Let's start with the design. The design started with, well, this amazing paint job. This started with Rust-Oleum Black as a primer, a green base, and then he did silver sharpie details, which he's actually swapping over to like silver hand paints now for whatever reason. And it looks pretty cool. Not too much more to the design, minus the vector kit, which looks really, really good on this strife and really nice. On with the worker lightweight stock with the adjustable cheek riser. And then in front here, you have a worker threadable suppressor with a night muzzle slash flash hider, whatever you want to call it. And it threads on just like that. Onto the ergo. Ergonomics of this blaster, guess what? There's something very different. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. It's it's same as the Strife. <laughs> it's, you have the, the part of the vector kit that bolts on down here, which adds a little bit more comfort, but not too much in my opinion. And I think the Strife grip by itself is fine. But hey, if you have larger hands than me, then cool, it works out for you. Uh, you have the, you know, spot to hold your hands on the vector kit right up here, really comfy, pick rail on the bottom here, and then full length pick rail on the top, uh, so you can put like a scope or red dot on top or a grip on the bottom, or if you're in Australia, you can put a red dot down here and a grip up top, whatever works for you. Uh, sorry you guys are upside down. On the functionality of a blaster. Right, guys you won't believe this this stripe functions exactly like every other stripe <laughs> this stripe is running off of a mechanical semi-automatic pusher along with a 2s lipo battery <laughs> running off of a 21 amp omeron switch with 16 gauge wiring going to a worker metal flybo cage v3 with fan r's and incitanto wheels i'll get more into the performance of this cage in a little bit and mainly after a firing demo so you guys can see something there but speaking of firing demo, on to the firing demo. Let's get into it, guys. Now we're doing a grippings test on the gun thingy mid jig, the XYT LMG SMG thingy, whatever the hell you want to call it. Starting off with Nerf Weed Darks. off the suppressor. Weird. Now I'm trying to nerf AccuStrike darts. Trying to bench for a swaffle darts. Now try an X shot, whatever the hell you want to call these things. Shooting the test track on the X shot darts again. Shot grouping. Now shooting a Gen 1 Strife running off of three IMRs and one dummy battery off stock motors and stock flywheels. X shot darts. Well, um, to my final thoughts and opinions on this blaster, uh, I think it's great that is Tessa's first Strife build, but I need to really take some time here, stick with me, where I break down what just happened. The fire groupings of this blaster are tremendously terrible. They are not good whatsoever. Um, it is either shooting crazy left or crazy right or crazy up or crazy down. 
I spent time last night at like two in the morning trying to zero this thing in with one of my firearm optics, which some blasters you can do with. This one was so unpredictable and shooting so wildly out of control that I couldn't zero the blaster. And because of that, me not being able to zero a blaster means I couldn't get it to consistently hit in any, any rhythm, any kind of pattern that I wanted. It was going any direction it wanted to or any direction it felt like. Now this breaks it down to one of two things. The flywheels are being misaligned or the flywheel cage is not properly seated. This is running a swappable cage setup, so maybe it's not properly seated. And quite frankly, it's not my job to fix that. I'm just here to point this out. Now, I did take my IMR uh, Strife, my Gen 1 IMR Strife, and run it through the same thing. Yes, the grouping isn't great necessarily, but it's more predictable in the sense that I'm able to see it shooting a little bit more high right than it, uh, it should be. And with me trying to zero it, I can actually get to hit pretty tight groupings if I try. That was the first uh, test of me shooting that and zeroing that blaster. I didn't do any more tests. This was like take 28 of 30 that I thought was the best looking one and that hurts to say. So at the end of the day, where do I put Tesseract right now? I'm extremely disappointed with the performance of this blaster. It looks incredible, don't get me wrong guys, but I have to be realistic here. It does not perform well and that is a honest statement here. Uh, I'm not saying it's the wheels, I'm not saying it's the, the 5 combo or whatever. I think it does come down to either the wheels being misaligned or the cage being improperly seated into the screw posts. So I think if you get that fixed and you start zeroing it in, it'll be a lot better. I wish I could end this on a better note, guys, but I can't. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. You guys should be awesome. If you like what I do here and you want to help out the channel, please consider subscribing. It's free. You can always change your mind later and unsubscribe, so why not subscribe? Remember, guys, as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't, and neither are my opinions. Stay safe. God bless.